I think uh, today really caps off um, what we did in December. You know, we didn't release a lot of guys in December, but uh, our team is here on campus right now. So I think these 10 guys, um, they, they cap off what a great recruiting class I think we just had. Um, all together, when you had the guys that's here along with these 10, it's probably about 30 or so. Uh, just kind of kept some of those other guys under the radar a little bit while we were over the Christmas break. So. Uh, really excited about these guys, especially the high school guys in this mix. Um, I feel like we hit a home run. Got a, got a kid out of Texas, O-lineman. Uh, we tried to really make this class a O-line emphasis and O-line heavy. Uh, I think we did that even with some of our preferred walk-ons that we have coming in. Uh, so we, we look to increase there, and, and I think we did that. Any questions? Hey, Coach, you obviously talk a lot about trying to recruit dogs. Can you talk about what it is that you're looking for? Yeah, so we, we tell guys, it, it, you have to be disciplined, you have to be obedient, you have to have a lot of grit to be one of us. That's what it takes. And so guys that, that have done that on the field and off the field in the classroom, guys that their coaches say they do exactly what they tell them to do, and then guys that just stand out that are tough, guys that when you can see their toughness and their physicality on film, um, it took a lot of grit. If, if you're high, some of the high school guys, I believe all of them on this list, uh, except for one, a uh, kid from Illinois, his spring season is coming up, but all these guys played during COVID. And so I think you got to have a lot of grit to do that because we did that here and we know what it takes to do that. And so um, for these guys, these high school guys, especially to go out and, and play through that, it showed us that they had grit. Uh, but most of all, they, are all, they all come highly recommended from their coach. And that, that means a lot to us. We don't deal in third parties and things of that nature. We go straight to the high school coach and all these guys come highly recommended. And then they have the academic record to sustain here at Mesa. And so that was important to us as well. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? that you know, given the fact that you have players that are doing extra years this year, there's obviously a log jam going on. Yeah. Can you, can you talk to what that process of working with high schoolers is like throughout all this? Yeah, you know, I was talking to a guy the other day, and I told him now, now the, the, the power struggle has switched. Normally, the player has the power, right? When you go through recruiting, you recruit a player, and, and he can tell you no, you follow him around, you do all this stuff. Well, now, because of COVID, us as coaches now have the power. We decide who we want to take. And so every player that we recruited was hand-picked from a, a list of guys that wanted to be here. And so it's just COVID has exposed everything, and it's made some power channel switch. And um, I'm very excited about the guys that we, that we got because they were picked amongst a group uh, of a lot of guys. Our coaches did an extremely good job uh, with, with having recruiting visits virtually. We had a, a, uh, a big virtual recruiting visit where we had 200 people on there. And we had to go through and evaluate and sort through all of those guys. And so if, if you sign with the Mesa Mavericks today, then you're hand-picked and you fit what we, what we absolutely need. And so. That's how it's changed, where normally you might take a guy because you didn't get a guy. Um, everybody we wanted, we got, and uh, that, that's been different over my 15 years. So with the log jam of guys coming back, I know you had some guys that are obviously transferring out. Mm -hmm. but is that why you wanted a, a smaller class? Yeah, you know, Patty, we went to work in December. We wanted, we didn't, not necessarily we wanted a smaller class, we wanted guys to be here in January. We, we know what it's like, based on previous experiences, to have the team here in the spring. And so the majority of our team, the, the majority of the contributors are here right now, and we're about to go to this workout at 350, and they'll be out there running around. So when you got 110 guys already here, that's different. We only carry 130. And so, um, we, we wanted it to be small. The, small, the, the reason why it's small is because it's a quality class. Uh, we wanted guys that can contribute to our long-term success. And so these guys, we felt like, could do that. So are the high school guys, did they graduate No. They're so they'll be Yeah, they'll be here in August. The three junior college guys on this list are already here. Okay. Uh, they signed with us. They signed in their lives with us before. So, so we're, we're basically waiting on seven guys along with some additional preferred walk-on guys. Uh, 20. Yep, yep. You know, Azusa Pacific shut down their program, and uh, we were able to get a bunch of guys from there. They're already here and enrolled in school. 
And so December was the bigger day for us. Now, you know, on our level, nobody really talks about that day, but December was the biggest day. And uh, now we get a chance to cap it off with this class. Yeah, you know, guys, what we what we put out there on social media, what we uh, what our players do on social media, and, and you know, helping us with guys, I think, and, and just sharing their experience via social media has attracted a lot of guys to our program. Um, and so, when you're in COVID and you can't go physically visit places, a lot of the times you you have to use every avenue that we can. What we've been able to do is show people how attractive Colorado Mesa is virtually. And then when they get here, they go, Coach, man, it's better than what I even imagined uh, on, from the virtual. It's better in person. And so, um, it, you know, I think it speaks a lot to our coaching staff. It speaks a lot to our players um, to get guys from four-year four schools uh, here just on this level, not just to mention at our school, but on this level. Guys have a lot of options these days. It's not like when I played, there was no portal. You used to have to know somebody on the staff to find out a kid was leaving. Well, guys have a lot more options. And so us as coaches, the portal is part of what we do now. And so we've been able to really get in it and, and make some headway. Yeah, you know, I, I want to I want to get in trouble here, but COVID has helped the Mason Mavericks football program, um, and it's helped us in a lot of different ways. There are some sometimes when you're new, um, where you're in a fight with somebody in recruiting that might have a better this than you, might have a better that than you, um, and you say, man, if if we could just get that kid on our campus and he can feel the relationship that we want to have with him, we can get him. Well, COVID has made things come down to relationship. And I think nobody does it better than what we do from a relationship standpoint. And so because of that, we've been able to land guys that we really want and not just have to settle before. Kids buy with their eyes or they buy, or they buy with their hearts. And so since they couldn't go see, then they had to use their heart. And, and I think that's where we won. Yeah, it, it helped us as a staff in evaluation. Uh, we were able to see what we still needed, see where we were deficient, see where we were okay without the pressures of a regular season. You know, when I sat down here before y'all when I got the job, I told you we were, it's our goal to win a championship every time we go out there. But when they took the championship from us, then it was our, our mission to then get as good as we can to get ready for a, a championship run. Those three games allowed us to do that. Um, we were allowed to get done some things from a staff standpoint. It's my first time on the headsets with those guys. Uh, it's the first time they were on the headsets with me. First time we all, our program came to fruition. So those three games really helped us. Some kids in our program realized that it's too much for them, and they moved on, which is okay. We had some seniors that we didn't want to lose, that life just kept calling them, and they decided to move on but they were able to at least say that they played a game their, their senior year. So those three games did a lot for us, more so off the field and evaluation than it did on the field. Just on a personal level, you know, a big, couple of big parts of recruiting, are you, you travel around, are you away from your family, but you get to see a lot of different schools, get to interact with a lot of kids. You also, you know, it's the personal side, eat a lot of good meals, you know, uh, house, you know, I mean, just what did it mean to not be out on the trail for you this off season? Yeah, you know, we were going to remain safe. And, and so as, as much as we like to do that, uh, being safe, uh, keeping coaches and their families safe, um, that was more important to us. And so um, it, it, when you really weighed the risk versus the game, I, I can always go get some barbecue from Texas. Uh, I can pay for that, not in recruiting money. It, it was important that we kept people safe and that we remain safe to ourse ourselves. And so I, I just, um, it, it also showed us some things that we don't have to do anymore. Um, There's some things in recruiting that will change across the board because we figured out we don't have to do X, Y, and Z anymore. And so, especially for our level, that helps. 
uh, from a financial standpoint and just from, you know, coaches being worked. Recruiting is a grind, man. So you think about it, you, you leave that last game of the fall and you don't see anybody outside of recruits and kids and coaches until this time. Well, that last game for us was in October. And so we immediately went to work when it didn't look like we were going to play, but we were also able to go home at night. We were also able to stay here over the weekends and finish a Zoom call and then go uh, and do what we normally wouldn't be able to do. And so uh, it, 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 it sucked in the beginning because it's not normal and coaches like normal, but it ended up working itself out. Now, make no mistake, we can't wait to get back out there because there is no substitute for personal evaluation. You know, quarterback, you need to see quarterback throw the ball. And so that, those are some of the things that we'll get back to. Yeah. You can't have enough. Yeah. You brought in a lot last year, too. Yeah. You know, O-line and D-line is where, where it's won in Division Two. If you go back and you look at the national championship teams that have won it, um, they were dominant on the O and D-line, and when they lost a guy, the train didn't stop. And so we were always going to make that a priority here. Uh, Coach Barella is one of the best O-line coaches in the country on any level. The job he did with this offensive line unit from 2019 to 2020 is nothing short of amazing. So we're going to continue to give him what he needs because he puts out a product that helps us. But how many guys left, do you know? Oh, five or six. Okay. Yeah, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't very many. Um, and, you know, here's the deal. Guys leave. Be, you know, for a couple of reasons, right? They leave because they're unhappy. They leave because they're not playing what they want to, how they want to play. They leave because the, the position is loaded. Or some guys just flat out turn it down and, and don't compete. And then you got your guys that are great casualties on this level, unfortunately. Uh, we've eliminated a lot of those reasons why guys leave. Wasn't a lot of grades. Wasn't a lot of guys just unhappy. There were guys that just didn't see themselves competing with what we were bringing. And so they decided to go try somewhere else. Well, if you're leaving because you feel like we're so stacked at a spot that you need to go somewhere else, that's a good reason to leave, in my opinion, because that means you don't want to compete. And if you don't want to compete, this ain't the program any longer that you can hang out in. And so uh, we were able to get those guys at different places. We wished them the best. But now this is the football team that we've wanted. Uh, we don't want anybody else to quit. We want to get these 130 guys to August because we feel like everybody has a place. With some of these guys, I mean, obviously the high school guys, you've gotten kids from very successful programs. Mm -hmm. And obviously that's, that's high on the, on, the, on the list. Yeah. Let's go find some winners. Winners win. And, and they, they, they don't stop at any, any obstacle in order to win. They're going to win. And so – we needed to change the mindset. I think we talked about that when I got here. We've got to change the mindset. How do, you, how do you form a winning program where you recruit winners? You train winners on winning. And so um, we wanted to find guys that weren't going to take being second place. Um, and so we feel like we've got those guys. And then we feel like the guys that are here are, are creating that mentality. So, Patty, I'm excited. Like, I, I mean, I am. A year ago, I was okay. Right now, I'm excited because there's a lot of names that you guys don't see that are going to help the Mesa Mavericks. And so I can't wait for you to see what I see. And I'm going to keep them quiet, Patty, until, until you hear the name over the announcer. Um, but it, this football team has changed. We flipped this roster upside down and inside out. Uh, we look different walking around. We got guys that are the size of the bull outside. Uh, we got guys that can run. And so... Uh, in, in 20 minutes, I'm going to go watch them run because I, I like really watching them. And they truly love each other. So they're, they're listening to what we're saying. And I can go all day about these guys. But this football team is different. We're going to compete for it. And, and as soon as they put the championships back on the market, then we're going after it at no cost.